Hello, my name's Richard Kent. Uh, today I'd like to talk about how birds navigate. It's actually a complete mystery how birds navigate, and we still don't really know, but it is truly remarkable. One of the most famous birds that, uh, is the sooty shearwater, which uh, navigates um, twice a year uh, from um, New Zealand uh, across the whole of the Pacific, uh, 20,000 miles at 300 miles a day, to um, California and Alaska and Japan. And then, uh, six months later, comes back again, another 20,000 miles, another 300 miles a day, and navigates right back to the original nest. They have their original nest in the two different countries, whichever country they're going to. Now the question is, how do they do it? It's something absolutely extraordinary. Now, all birds um, use the sun. Uh, birds can, are constantly aware of the position of the sun, and it doesn't matter whether it's cloudy or not, because birds see plain polarised light, which of course comes through the sun. So actually, not just birds, but insects, and virtually anything that flies is very aware of the position of the sun. Secondly, obviously, birds will use their eyes to get visual clues of landscapes and horizons and that sort of thing. But that wouldn't get you from New Zealand to um, uh, Canada or, uh, or um, Japan or um, California or Alaska or anywhere like that. No, they have to have something much, much more profound than that. And what, they, what it is believed is that um, these amazing sooty shearwaters and also other birds that also uh, navigate as well, that's all birds virtually, um, they actually use uh, uh, the magnetic field of the earth. And that is truly amazing. They are actually sensitive to the magnetic field of the earth. Now you and I are not sensitive or even aware of the magnetic field of the earth, but migrating birds are very aware of the magnetic field of the earth. And they actually have um, um, iron oxide in their beaks and also in the semicircular canals in their ears. And they also have um, cells in the back of their retinas, which are also electronic, they're also aware of changes in magnetic fields. And these uh, three uh, sources of magnetic, um, a magnetic awareness from the beaks and the semicircular canals and the ears, and also the, um, from the cells in the retina of the eyes, uh, is fed to the brain, which then has a seriously complex task to do. Because the brain then computes the position of the sun, which is moving all the time, the position of the clouds, the position of the land below, the change in the wind, because remember, wind changes all the time, so they have to keep, just like an aeroplane, they have to keep adjusting their flight according to how much wind is going across their, um, if they're flying from north to south and there's a west-east uh, wind, then they'll have to adjust their flight uh, to fly, to veer more to the west than to the east in order to stay on target, as it were, and keep on the right navigation field. But the thing is, their navigation isn't just a little bit right, it's 100% right. They know exactly where to go. Uh, after 20,000 miles, travelling 300 miles a day, these little birds, and they're tiny, know exactly where to go and land in the same nest year after year after year. Now, if that isn't an example of God's design built into tiny little birds, I don't know what is. That couldn't possibly evolve. How could you evolve a navigation system that involves the magnetic field? Um, imagine you're a bird sitting somewhere down in New Zealand and say, well, I'd like to fly to somewhere up north. Let's have a go. Sorry, that's not going to work. You're going to drown on the way. No, this is an example of God's amazing intelligent design. Thank you for listening and God bless you. Thank you.